Today, I'm gonna to be going over 10 different Google Ads mistakes that you need to avoid. We're gonna get started first and foremost with the place I always get started with, and that is not using conversion tracking. If you go into your conversion actions page and you don't have a conversion action set up that's properly being recorded, then what's happening is you are not getting the most out of your campaign. So you should either have a lead conversion action or a sales conversion action, and the sales conversion action should measure revenue so you can actually pull your revenue into Google Ads and optimize for more revenue. So mistake number one to avoid is not using conversion tracking. Mistake number two is not using a smart bidding strategy. So no matter what campaign you're running, you should be using a smart bidding strategy and optimizing for conversions. So you can see here, if I go within my current campaign here, now this campaign exists just for tutorials, this whole entire account exists just for tutorials. But what you wanna do is make sure that you have a goal set up, so that is gonna be your conversion goal that you're optimizing for. And then you also want to be using one of the smart bidding strategies. So if we come over here to change bidding strategies and we click on the drop down here, you can see some of the automated bid strategies. You should either be using maximize conversions, maximize conversion value, target CPA, or target return on ad spend. Those are the four smart bidding strategies that you should be focused on using for your campaign. Mistake number three is using unorganized ad groups. So the last thing you need to do is put all of your keywords into one ad group or just have a small amount of ad groups that aren't tightly themed by exactly what you're trying to target. I generally create ad groups based on the landing pages where I'm trying to send traffic to. So if I have something like Montessori bath toys and Montessori busy boards, I wanna target separate keywords within these ad groups. I want advertisements within these ad groups that are completely relevant to exactly who I'm trying to target. And I wanna send people to the most relevant landing page possible. So mistake number three to avoid is unorganized ad groups. Mistake number four is definitely more for lower budget advertisers, and that's not using cost controls. So one of the things that you can do is obviously you can set up your daily budget, but within a specific campaign, one of the things that we can do is if we come over here to tools and we go to budgets and bidding and we open up our portfolio bid strategies, you're going to see two things here, shared budgets and bid strategies. You can actually share budgets among different campaigns and basically try to maximize your result based on one shared budget. So if you wanna spend $100 a day and you wanna spend it between three different campaigns, set up a shared budget to give a little bit more cost control so that your actual advertising spend is gonna be going into the campaigns that are driving you the best possible results. So now if we come over here and we click on bid strategies, and we open up portfolio bid strategies. And let's just say, for example, you wanna use a target return on ad spend bid strategy. One thing I see advertisers do is set up maximize conversions or maximize conversion value, not realizing that your initial bids and your initial clicks are gonna be generally high because Google Ads is gonna do a little more testing. So one of the things you can do if you wanna set up cost controls is say, you know what, I wanna set a target return on ad spend. We wanna to get to a 350% return on ad spend. And what we can do is under advanced options here is set a maximum bid limit. So if we know that we have a tight budget and we're trying to maximize that return on ad spend, maxima, maximum bid limits may keep you out of certain auctions, but it will give you a little bit more cost control, especially when you initially set up your campaign. If you're trying to avoid spending three, four, five dollars per click, you can set a maximum bid limit here of two dollars, still enter a lot of ad auctions, and then try to focus on achieving that target return on ad spend without overspending in the beginning of your campaign. Mistake number five is not testing different keyword match types. So when you come in here and you're targeting keywords, you can see right now I have the broad match keyword here. So one of the things that you can do is when you're adding search keywords to your ad group is you can add the other match types as well. So if we do these two keywords, we have the phrase match and the exact match keyword. And what we can do is click on save. Now you do not want to run all three of these match types in the same ad group. Another mistake to avoid, do not run all three in the same ad group. Pause these and run two week tests. So we run broad match for two weeks, we'll look at the results. We'll run phrase match for a couple weeks, we'll look at the results. Now you may say, okay, well, we're, we kind of consistently are putting Google in this testing phase. That's perfectly fine. We want Google to test our ads and we want Google to test our keyword match types to make sure that we are targeting the best possible keywords. The other thing that you wanna do and this will lead us directly into mistake number six is make sure you're viewing the search terms report and adding negative search keywords. So the search terms report report will actually show you the search terms that triggered your advertisements. I haven't ran this campaign yet, so I don't have these here, but as soon as you start running your search campaign, you will see all of your search terms. What you wanna do with that information is when we are coming down here to our search keywords, in addition to the keywords we're targeting, we wanna make sure that we're also adding negative search keywords. So just come in here, add negative keywords. You could do this for specific brands. You could do it for people who have non-transactional keywords, people who are searching things like free or cheap or discount or promo code. What you wanna do is use negative keywords that are gonna drag 
drag your campaign down so that you are no longer appearing in the auction when people are searching specific terms that don't convert as well as the terms you are targeting. The next mistake if we come into the ads for our campaign is only creating one ad per ad group. So you should always be testing advertisements, whether you are testing your landing pages or you are testing your actual ad copy. So two different ways to do this. Number one is create one advertisement and create a second advertisement and use unique ad copy throughout those advertisements. Generally what I try to do is focus one advertisement on selling towards one emotion and one advertisement on selling towards another emotion. In this case, something like Montessori busy boards, I would sell on the emotion of give yourself more time as you are at home, you're parenting, and you need your kids to play with something that's going to help with their development while also giving yourself a little more time to work, and do all the different things we have to do around the house every single day. The other one could be more of a get the best possible gifts, whether it's for your kids, whether it's for other people looking for gifts. So when somebody's searching Montessori busy boards, talk to different emotions and see which emotional copywriting actually works better. And all you need to do is run your ads for, let's just say a month, maybe a month and a half, uh, depending on how much activity they're getting, and then consistently add fresh advertisements in here. You can run three responsive search ads per ad group. The other thing that you can do is take one advertisement, duplicate it, and basically use the same exact advertisement with a different landing page. So I did that for this one here, and that's going to bring us directly into our next mistake to avoid, and that is not ever testing your landing pages. So it can be difficult to test ads and landing pages, but one of the easiest ways to test your responsive search ads and landing pages at the same time is create one responsive search ad, just literally copy it, and paste it directly in your same exact ad group. So you have an identical advertisement with a different final URL. So that's all you need to do is update your final URL. And if we come in here, you can see I have one landing page here, a bunch of different Montessori busy boards for sale, and a landing page here, more blog post focused, 18 best Montessori busy boards for 2023. And we scroll down and we have a list of all of these different busy boards for sale. So when you are trying to test your advertisements, make sure you're testing not only your ad copy with multiple advertisements, but you also want to test your landing pages. Keep in mind to do an A-B test, you need everything to be equal. So either test landing pages or test ad copy at one time. And then as you continue to test, switch from ad copy to landing page because you cannot have three different ads here with multiple landing pages with different ad copy. It's not really the best way to test, although it's better to do that than do one resp responsive search ad in your ad group. And to continue with our ads is making sure uh, this is going to be mistake number nine. Mistake number nine is not using assets properly or just using a limited amount of assets. So what you want to do is you'll see all the different assets that we have here. Business name, business logo, site link, call out, structured snippet, call, lead form, location, price, app, and promotion. Any of these assets that are relevant for your business, for example, you have a physical store location, make sure you are running location assets. You're trying to drive leads for your business, run a lead form asset. If your main goal is phone calls, make sure you have call assets added to all of your advertisements. If you have site links, well, you should always incorporate site links, call outs, and structured snippets are the easiest assets to use. And then in addition, you should have your business name, your business logo, incorporate prices, especially if you have fixed prices for certain services. If you have a mobile app, you can add that as an asset as well. The other thing is to look at assets. Some of them can be added to the ad group level as well. Actually, a lot of them can be added to the ad group level. So you can see here for the Montessori Busy Boards ad group here, I added a Montessori Puzzles site link to that specific ad group. So when you're using assets, you can not only add them to the campaign level, but you can also add them to the ad group level. And that is going to give you the best possible results so that you can ensure that every single time somebody is seeing your advertisements, they are seeing it from a very relevant perspective where you have all of these different assets that enhance your advertisement and make it as relevant and as targeted as possible based on what people are actually searching. Last but not least, if we come over to audiences, keywords, and content, and we open up our audiences here, one of the things that you want to do, or we could do it directly in our tools and going to shared library and our audience manager, you want to make sure you're using remarketing segments. So what you can see here is one of the things you're going to see is your data segments. So I just added these, but you can see all users of my website. So basically, even if you're just targeting everybody who's visited your website, you can drive additional conversions from people who have not converted yet. A best practice is to exclude people who have converted and target people who are all users of your website using small audience sizes in terms of time periods. So somebody who just converted within the last week, then what you want to do is say, okay, we're not going to advertise to this person for a little bit. Maybe you still want to, depends on what you're selling. But ultimately what you want to do is make sure you are incorporating your remarketing audiences, your data segments 
and you can use your email list and you can also use your website. If we click on the plus sign here, you can see a lot of different options, app users, YouTube users, customer list, Google analytics, and lead form segment in addition to custom combinations. So use remarketing audiences as a best practice to drive additional conversions. So these are the 10 Google ads mistakes that you need to avoid. A lot of times it comes down to testing, making sure you're optimizing conversions, making sure that you are using smart bidding strategies, test multiple ads, test different assets, make sure you're testing your landing pages, make sure you are using remarketing audiences, and focus on all of these different mistakes that you need to avoid. And if you're making any of them, fix them and then continue to move forward and improve your overall campaign results. If you have any questions about any of this, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.